Do you want to be able to tell almost anyone almost anything with only two words? And how about if you could do it without saying a single word? Then you need, not a guarantee, Wolbert's. The new app that's like Pocket Alibi Light, in that it's like Pocket Alibi if Pocket Alibi only had two words instead of 200 words. Oh yeah, and if it also played the Lulberts podcast. Lulberts, that's our word. Not a guarantee, Lulberts is from Beastlick Internet Policy Commission Outreach Team, the good people who brought you Bipcoin, Fiendphone, and the best-selling app, Find Gigi Allen's Grave. Log on today at HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash play dot google dot com and get the free Bipcot licensed app not a guarantee Lulberts do it do it do it till you satisfied That's our word, brought to you by Pipcot and Fiendphone. I think I've got this worked out. The last time I did one, I had some problems. Let's talk about that in a second. Um, and Pixel. Rest, rest music Pixel. by 3 Chain Links. No, not anymore. <laughs> I forget who was doing the music. Yeah, we, we, we changed the music back in um, 25 when I did my um, JFK conspiracy refutation. And I think I'm a little bit too loud. I'll just turn it down a little bit. On the fly editing. <laughs> And I'm here with you Steve Miller Miller. Echoey to me. Well, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Steve Miller Miller, uh, you, what do you, are you? Is that your regular show, the uh, Passive Aggressive Hour, or is that just something you were? I'm a recurring guest on the Passive Aggressive Hour. You okay. have to listen to it. I listen to the, it. It's one of these shows, yeah, that uh, very ha- has a lot of like ongoing gigs. So the host, I'll let you in on a little secret, doesn't live in South Dakota, but. Uh, he had like 15 downloads from South Dakota one time, and he heavily geared the show toward local Sioux Falls happenings. <laughs> and he started calling the local call-in shows on the Sioux Falls radio, like Larry the Cable Guy sort of thing. And that was that. And yeah. And it's <laughs> I been was South Dakota ever since. When, when Nick called in, what did he say? <laughs> Netflix and, yeah. ch- and Chili. <laughs> Chili, Yeah. Yeah. It's only funny. High quality show. Saying. Yeah. Anyways. J- and you're John also Pencil, on the, the guy who looks like a washed up beach boy is uh, he's one of the funniest people I know. Yeah. Like, and you're on the they're all friends of mine. Yeah. I think that's about it. Unless you got a, a gig you want to plug. We'll probably. That's not a mind. drug reference, folks. There's a show called The Freedom Fiends. Yeah. And I am on that show. <laughs> he's not on the fiends is not a way of saying, you know, but you can mainline happy it. sauce. You can mainline it. I can confirm that mainline. You, you know where that term comes from? There's mainline suburbs in Philadelphia, and all the rich women were all drug addicts. And that's how we got that. Yeah. A lot of pill heads. A lot of yeah, yeah. If so a pill head dies in her sleep. If a if a pill head rich woman dies in her sleep, then it's a tragic accident. If she dies under the bridge in Kensington, then it's what she had coming to her. That's how it works. Uh, but enough about Pat Oswalt's wife. What were you saying? <laughs> I'm- all right, I'm tr- I'm trying to keep this serious for a second so I can talk about my new audio setup. <laughs> You're just trying to make me die. Okay, sorry. Ah, all right. So uh, the last episode we did with uh, David Lukehart, I think that's his name. I can never remember his last name. Right, David Duke. David Dukehart. Uh, we had some like clipping error. I don't know if you listened to that episode, but it sounds like it's it was kind of clip 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 clip. I think I fixed that. I'm not sure. And it's going to sound even more weird if it actually does reoccur again. But I think I fixed it. I was doing some testing. And I think I realized it was the SD card in the Raspberry Pi that wasn't as fast as the one that I'm using now, which is the one I'm using for for coding, which this is my new project that I'm doing, learning how to code, um, which is fun. And I highly recommend it. I should probably talk about that later. Um, but I think I got this fixed and it's going to, like I said, it's going to be, I'm going to sound like a fucking idiot while it's, while it's actually clipping, right? (laughs) If it is clipping, but I think I fixed it, but I think I got this all set up. I think I'm going to, I'm going to get this to work fucking, I'm going to die trying, but it's going to be a whole lot cheaper than buying one of those Zunes. Cause that's what Michael Dean was telling me to buy was to buy a Zune. 
um, which is like 150 bucks if I want to buy it new, or I can buy it used for 100 dollars. And I'm a little bit sketchy about buying used stuff on Amazon, but please donate. Yeah, hashtag please donate. Actually, I'm, speaking of please donate, we actually did break even, and I'm happy. I'm, I'll be happy if I break even because it's paying my server bills for for the Lulberts, which is like it's like 13 bucks a month. And then if you calculate both of the domains, which is the Lulberts.com and Lulberts.com, we're breaking even. Yay! But uh, server, I'd rather private messenger. Yeah, well, that doesn't do an RSS feed, unfortunately. But if you can figure that out, well, <laughs> I'll save a whole bunch of money. But then people will buy up the lowbirds.com and put gay porn on there or something. Who knows? I'm but, not the one learning to code. <laughs> I am. Uh, I know. I have an interesting story about that. But anyway, so what's going on? In, oh, Free Adam Freeman. Yeah. Did you hear that new uh, that new radio show? I think it's on in your town. I think it's called uh, Dear White People. <laughs> you did- I, th- my my town is is basically Dear White People, the live action film. Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> Actually, no. It's it, it's Dear People with Change. <laughs> Hashtag please donate. Like the original please donate. Yeah. Person to person. Yeah. So did you, you know, see this trailer? I like that. Were you outraged, uh, I, outraged by this trailer when you first saw it? Or did you think something? I, 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 did, I did see the trailer and I thought uh, these people could be trolling. And if so, I totally blessed their grind. <laughs> that was kind of like my, my first one. I was like a little bit outraged and I was like, you know what? Something doesn't smell right. <laughs> it does not. I thought smell they were right. getting free media because it, it's it, it's it seemed like it was designed for people to get outraged about, mm-hmm. and then people, of course, took the bait, and that was that. They're master baiters. Yep. And you did not see the movie, right? That, that it's based on the series. It's a series on Netflix called Dear White People. It's I, not I'm out aware yet. There's a series on Netflix, and l- like Friday Night Lights before it, I've seen neither the movie nor the show subsequent. Yeah, I ended up watching the movie because everybody was saying, well, not everybody. Everybody was freaking out, not knowing what was going on. They, I guess, allegedly the, the 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 writer for the show, that's what it's listed on the wiki. It's not listed on IMDb. So I'm going by IMDb because that's a little bit more reliable than, than a medium that anybody can edit. But the one according to um, Wikipedia, Wikipedia, uh, if you go to his Twitter page, like there was a tweet that he said where he was like, fuck white people. But it turned out he was just a little bit, you know, being uh, a little bit ass hurt that, you know, Hillary Clinton didn't win. That's what it was. Uh, then he did, did like a follow up. He's like, seriously, fuck white people. And he shows a demographic that like, oh, most people, most white people voted for uh, Trump or uh, for Trump and, and black people voted for Hillary. And that's who he was stumping for. I mean, sure, it, it was a shit but- tweet. Both of them. You know what? There were also a astronomical amount of white people who put on hideous hats mm-hmm. that made them look like an army of fluorescent trolls and uh, milled around the, the the streets of every city because they were so ass hurt that Hillary lost. Yeah, I'm not a fan so, of I'm not a fan of uh, Family Guy, but I will say that the uh, <laughs> shut up Megs <laughs> they, where they were showing like all the pictures of people wearing the hats and then Meg from, from family guy. It's kind of like, she was wearing the, she wears like the same beanie almost. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. So it was like, shut up Megs. Um, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is, this is horrible, but yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll, what's, what is this really bad? There's something else going on here. I don't know about. And, and then it turns out i watched like a couple of videos. One was by a guy named Lasoyo, and then the other one was by Philip Philip DeFranco. You know who that guy is, right? Sexy Phil. Is he gay? No, but I, I don't, <laughs> uh, I I don't know who he is, and therefore can't give you any advice on mm. his sexuality. But uh, who would have known that white genocide would be set into motion by Netflix? <laughs> uh, I guess they pressed play. Yeah, yeah. This is what you get when you Our pay ten bucks a month. Keep watching. This is what you get for paying ten bucks for something you can just download for free, right? Anyway, yep. <clears throat> so I watched it and you know, I I thought it was good at first, but then like the more I thought about it, I was like, this is actually really good because in the end there was no, I mean, like there was one guy. I'll talk about that in a second, but there was one guy who was kind of like who wasn't vilified, but everybody in this movie was vilified, including the girl who was like. You know, half white people. She ended up changing her mind and she ended up not becoming like this racially. She turned out to be actually be a fraud in a sense. 
Uh, and all of her friends were, were probably like the only ones who weren't frauds because they actually really did believe it. But she didn't. She ended up being like half white. And she didn't want anybody to know that. She was dating a white guy. She didn't want anybody to know that. And this white guy actually was like the hero of the film because he was the one that was kind of explaining to her, like, I think you're being a little bit too radical with this stuff. (laughs) And talked her out of it. And then she realized, like, yeah, you're right. You know what? And I was a bigot. Uh, You know, I was hiding the fact that I was dating a white guy from all these people. And, you know, just because I didn't want them to know that I, I really don't hate white people. And, you know, and it was, you know, I was a bad person. That was like the kind of moral of the story is that everybody in this movie was horrible the whole entire movie, except for this now one guy who's dating. Yeah, I feel people bring their own agendas to when they to to when they see these things. For mm-hmm. example, uh, I'm going to give you a quote and I'll tell you who said it. Uh, I saw Rogue One. I'm sure it was both extremely transphobic <laughs> and perfor- and promoting white genocide. Yep. But my cis cucked eyes were just too blind to see. Yep. Who said that? That would be me. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and anything that comes out anymore, it's always white genocide. Unless it's Angry Birds. <laughs> Did you see the Angry Birds movie? Because I'm ready to discuss that. I I tried watching it. I gave it my best. And I was like, all right, screw this. And I, I just kind of did the. I'm going to skip it a little bit. All right, see what's going on here. Skip it a little bit. And then I kind of went through the movie that way. And yeah. It, I watched it, it with my gay lover. It was and horrible. He, and he was hating it. And <laughs> that made me love it all the more. Because <laughs> troll hard, troll home. Yeah, it yep. really it really did. I don't think it really was trying to be uh, an, an uh, immigration paralog. It really wasn't. I just think they just, we'll just got to slap something together that resembles the, the video game. And it just turned out to be that. And then, you know, all the red pills <laughs> were just like assuming that. That's no, I was. definitely, I definitely like slapped his arm at one point And I was like, look, when uh, there were refugees of pigs and they claimed there were only three of them. And then there were 700 on board the ship. And they're all fighting age males, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> And they were ready, and the only thing that could stop them was some birds getting angry. Yep. Angry, Bir- angry Birds was a, a, a solid two-star film. Don't let anyone tell you differently. <laughs> C, C-. Minus. People are going to act like it's the worst thing ever. It, was, it, was it wasn't the worst like the, thing the, ever. The, the all-female the all, the all Ghostbusters was, was, was roughly the oh same quality God. and the same phenomenon. I saw that, too. I got about halfway through it, and I was like, you know what? I didn't, I didn't even chuckle. One time to this entire thing. Well, I didn't like the original Ghostbusters. Come at me, bro. Well, you're, but, you're uh, wrong. You're you're objectively wrong. Nah, it's a uh, it it was dumb. Yeah, it was boring. Nothing happens for most of it. And then like a couple ghosts come out, they get busted. The end. Uh, not much happens. See, I need to stop doing that. Ah, because that becomes integral to your impression of me, where uh, it sounds like American Kissinger. Yeah, there uh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and I was listening to the uh, passive like aggressive that machine hour. you're operating in the background. <laughs> yeah, I was listening to the passive aggressive hour, and I was thinking like, no, I- I'm totally justified with all the ahs. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah, wrong, wrong. But anyways, yeah, going back to that movie, it was it was really good. If you if you were outraged by it, I highly recommend watching it because you'll probably like it because it, it is kind of. If you were outraged by something you didn't see, try seeing it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, I, there was a lot of stuff that I even took away from it. Like that was really good, uh, especially when they actually kind of they actually did kind of go after a lot of the problems of the black community as well, including homophobia. Like homophobia is huge. It's a huge problem in uh, the huge. black. It's huge uh, in, in the black community. They're extremely homophobic. That's the kind of problem Trump's come along to solve. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but uh, I, thought, I thought it was really good. And uh, yeah, so that's all I have to say about it. And you guys are freaking out over nothing. Yeah. We should probably call this episode. You guys, like, are, fr- dear you guys are freaking out over nothing. Yeah. Meanwhile, in other racial news, uh, looks like Trump's into Asian dudes. So, <laughs> our first our first sumosexual president, a our in. first sumosexual, and real talk, Shinzo Abe puts on fifty pounds. I'm right with the POTUS on this one, but they go away. They get they go to this lovers resort, Mar-a-Lago, Florida, more like well anyway, and 
They go golfing together. He tweets about it. They have a working dinner, if you know what I mean. Yeah, oh, ho, I don't know. Ho. I think Ho. No, his name's not Ho. It's Abe. Oh. But um bump. But um bump. Anyway, but yeah, we're apparently BF. We're BFF with, uh, with 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 the Japan now. Well, that's good. Yep. Good job. Everyone needs a BFF. Yep. Might as well have one that can fix your electronics. Am I right, racists? <laughs> <laughs> or build them too. Well, they built them right, so they of course they can fix it. We're gonna build a phone. It's gonna be. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be. It's gonna be like ten times bigger than feed phone. And I don't. I don't see where you say that my Bernie is exactly like my Trump. It's not. There's there hardly any crossover. Burn, burn, my Bernie is well, definitely a whole lot. The millionaires and billionaires are to have ninety nine percent of all the wealth, and we need to take that ninety percent of all that wealth and distribute it back Bernie to the people. Your Bernie sounds too Trumpy. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yep. So you're basic. So I, should I reverse them? And like, anytime I talk about, tr- well, actually, that'd be pretty trolly. If I did that. <laughs> yeah, it would. Yeah. You see, Hillary's gonna run again. That's a, that's the oh, rumor my. on the street. That that would that would be the worst thing the Democrats could possibly do. <laughs> the worst possible thing. It would be great if she lost to the prime in the primary to another black dude. <laughs> uh, like, had, had a failure sandwich. Yeah. You know what? I would actually probably join the Democratic Party if Jim Webb won the primary. <laughs> I really would. I, I, I'm, he's not perfect by all means, but Statist. there was definitely something about when they were all bragging about what their what their NRA rating was. And he was like, you know, it's kind of easy being anti-gun when you guys got security guards <laughs> with guns surrounding you at all times. I was like, I like this guy. <laughs> yeah, because he'll kill you with his bare hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I remember they did some article where they were talking about, yeah, Jim Webb actually really did kill a shitload of people in Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. And he was I even bragging McCain about did it. too, before he got captured. I like people who didn't get captured. <laughs> did he get captured? <laughs> McCain did. John got captured. McCain. Yeah, yeah but. Right. <clears throat> yeah, it seemed like he was almost John. kind of running in the wrong party. Yeah. But, oh, well. Who? John, Jim John Webb, McCain. Webb, Webb. Well, McCain too. McCain's pretty much a Democrat. Yeah. Well, Which I thought Palin was a weird choice. <laughs> I have a McCain Palin hat. Oh my I god! Found it at the thrift store last week. Yeah, it's a dollar. Yeah, I still have my. I have a. I have an Obama Biden pin and a. Uh, 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 what is it? Romney Ryan pin. I got them when I, when uh, when that election happened because they were they were both outside of the election poll one day and I was when I was voting and I was like oh I'll I'll take one and then I went to the other table and took took a pin from the other one I was like oh, I got some collectors items and uh, yeah and they've just been sitting in there and I was like you know what I'm gonna do this for every election and then this election came and I was like I don't even want that he's stuff a mitt lord house. yeah. I, I got like a Hillary sticker, and that was about it. And it's it's I'm not, I didn't stick it to anything. I just still have it. The mechan- uh, it was when she announced like, "Oh, here's my vice uh, running mate. Get a free sticker." And I went on there and I put my address in and stuff. And then they were like, "Oh, if you want your sticker, you got to give money." And I was like, "Nope." But they sent me the sticker anyway. <laughs> so I was like, "Okay." See you in hell. Yeah. Well, I got I got a free sticker. Uh, I cost her campaign some money, and I didn't stick it anywhere, and she lost. So I'm I'm going to basically say that I single handedly took down her campaign by uh, taking a two dollar sticker from her, <laughs> and not paying her what she wanted. Yeah. Well, I exposed PizzaGate, so mm-hmm. that's that. Yeah. And how I how I exposed Pizzagate was there was a conspiracy podcast about Pizzagate and I shared it. So <laughs> I'm pretty much single handedly responsible for taking down the pedophile Podestas. I mean, the, pedo the, was the, right. The in the interdimensional game. pedophile ring that, that's destroying this country right now. <laughs> they're coming in. They're coming in from a from a from a fold in the outer space regions with an next to the Van Allen belt and. The the creatures come in and they set up these pedophile rings inside of pizza places. It's it's, it's totally bizarre. I don't get into metaphysical stuff. I've been on the radio for many years now. <laughs> I don't get into metaphysical or religious stuff. But basically, Satan is a trans 
dimensional being who is coming in and uh, exposing Pizzagate and putting white genocide into our Netflix. Yep. And you yeah, only water filters can save you from the white genocide on Netflix. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> oh, now that I'm, I'm a little bit in, uh, I didn't want to announce it at the very beginning, but there um, we're doing a contest. I was meant to. I was supposed to do this in the last one. I was also supposed to talk about my my rig, which is probably a good idea not to do that while I was f- sounding like crap. But um, so yeah, I got a uh, I got a, uh, a flag. One of those. Um, it that's not. Uh, it's my. Fuck me. What what does that flag say? That's my purse. I don't know you. I got it. That's my purse. I don't know you. Flag. You know the Gatsby flag. I don't flag. know you. That's my purse. I have one. I have an extra one. And I'm going to give it away to the funniest four or five star comment on Stitcher or iTunes. So leave a comment there. Rate us. Hashtag please, please rate. <laughs> and uh, if it's funny enough, I'll, we'll announce a winner. And I'll, you should please. probably help me judge it because you're the comedian. Sure. Actual comedian. I had a Truth or Elvis gig in, at a VFW hall the other night and I didn't even get screamed at. Yeah. That's that's what a skilled comedian I am. A bunch of grizzled old veterans were watching me accuse George W. Bush of 9-11 through the <laughs> wonderful songs of Elvis. And uh, nothing Parton. happened. I expect I expected it. Yeah, with Truth or Dolly. Steel beams, steel beams, steel beams, steel beams. Can but, you play that at 45 yeah. speed and it make it sound better? <laughs> if you don't I'm get that, I'm not an audio technician, Jim. Oh, man. Damn it, Jim. There is a great video on YouTube, and it's like um, it's a forty-five record, and they played it at thirty-three speed, <laughs> and it's Jolene by Dolly Parton, and it actually sounds better if you play it at thirty-three speed, way way better. Um, but yeah, I'd like to hear that song at thirty-three speed for sure. Steel beams. <laughs> yeah, but what were some of the some yeah. of the some of the classics you were playing as Truth or Elvis? It was a it was a four song set. So I opened with DC Pilot to the tune of CC Rider. <laughs> There's no D DC Pilot, cause no plane hit the Pentagon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no D DC Pilot. Uh, then I talked about I went did my little like four or five minutes of jokes. Uh, then I, then uh, I talked about chemtrails and did suspicious lines. To the tune of Suspicious Minds. <laughs> Is that about t- Kim Trails? <laughs> yeah, of course it's about Kim Trails. Okay. Then Tr- Truth or Dolly came out. She did Steel Beams. Then uh, we to close the show, we did Half a Tank of Burning Fuel as a duet. <laughs> Cause your kisses lift me higher, <laughs> like a steel beam catching fire. You melt my beam of steel with burning fuel. This is gold, man. <laughs> yeah. My singing's terrible because I had bronchitis. Didn't well, care. Such a showman. I such a showman. I still did the show. Well, was yep. Elvis a really good singer? Come on, really? Come on. Come. I know you're probably triggering I mean, you're the countryside in you, but. He stole it from the blacks. Oh. So, yep. Add a half cup of white genocide. Dear white singers. Dear white singers. Yeah. You need to have at least you know three black people in your band to not be considered a racist. That's now the official rule. Ah, it's... Really? It's yeah. Three? That's, I just made it up. I just made it up. I thought it, I thought it was like a Vegas line, and it was like two and a half. No. So... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like Elvis, though? I love Elvis. I, I, got, I got this weird thing with Elvis. Like, El, some of Elvis stuff, it's, like, pretty good, but a lot of it's just really kind of just cheese. Real cheese. You know who loves Elvis? Fat old women. Yeah. Old women who are also fat tend to really enjoy the, the, the music of Elvis Presley. Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're into BBWs, go to Graceland. It, it's, it's right up your alley. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they'll give you a peanut butter and 9-11 truth sandwich. <laughs> but uh, was was Dolly uh, really endowed? Yep. Okay, so, so truth or Dolly? Shouts to Hannah Harkness. Yep. Bless her grind. Okay, well, that's great. 
Because, you know, what, what's yep. a Dolly Parton if she's not well endowed? You know, right? You can't have a, you, you, you can't have a flat chested Dolly, except you can. You could just say that they were taken out like the towers. Are they, was she wearing those kind of like aero, aerodynamic uh, bras that Howard Hughes uh, designed? Because those would go straight. Yes. Plus flannel. Plus she had her hair up. It was, it was, it was gold. Yeah. The, the, those. It uh, took forever though. What did we they were used performing to with things? burlesque dancers. Didn't they used to call those like jet bras or something like that? I think they used to call them jet bras. I would definitely let those hit my tower, if you know what I mean. Right? Wow. Too soon? Fire, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, they can crash. You'd be one of the first responders to that ground zero. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So to speak. Yep. (laughs) Too soon. Too soon. It's only been 17 years. Almost seventeen years. There's, uh, or six. This is un- This is unrelated to anything. But I have a friend who shall this remain nameless who thought, who thought, who thought Neil deGrasse Tyson was Neil the Grass Tyson, like he's Jimmy the Greek. <laughs> no, he's black. Yeah, they guy. call me the gr- they, they call me the Grass. Neil the Grass. Bing. Bing, bing, bong. I, I'm really starting to think that that guy has lost every, I, I don't know. I don't think anybody, like, I remember people used to post a lot of his stuff all the time. Now I don't see any of it. I think people got tired of his shit. Because I remember he yeah, was going on this. Tired, he, we're tired of space. God damn it. He, no, he, he just didn't talk about space. And then when he did start talking about space again after that, it was just like, shut the fuck up. Uh, BB-8 can't roll around oh, in the on. sand. <laughs> if I re- if I remember correctly, you had a shut up and talk about space episode of either this show or the Lawbirds. So the man does shut up and talk about space, and you're still at shut up. That's 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 black genocide. <laughs> no, it, we never actually did it. Like Bab and I were planning on doing a whole episode of the Fiends uh, about Neil deGrasse Tyson to just go through some of the st- stupid things that he says all the time that were not related to space. But as we were going through some of the stuff that he was saying, he, he started talking about space again. And it was really, especially during the star star Wars, when it got re-released and we were just like, man, he's, he's even being stupid about space now. He just needs to shut up. So then we changed it to, okay, Neil deGrasse Tyson just needs to shut up and talk about nothing. <laughs> and racist. And then Bab got fired from the fiends. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. Wah. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Doing um, fiend the homeless with Bab was funny though. Yeah. And you know give, what? You know what? All these crusty junkies radios. And what pisses me off about Bab is nothing to do with Bab. What pisses me off about Bab is that everybody t- says like, I need to listen to the Lawberts to get my Bab fix. And everybody's like, oh, I'm going to listen to the Lawberts now because Bab's on there. And I'm like, okay, so here's a list of all of our current co-hosts. Vote for who you want to see in. No one votes for Bab. But all these people say they want to hear Bab. I don't get it. They always vote for you and Matt. <laughs> and hardly anyone ever votes for anyone else. I think MK won one time, and that was it. But everybody else just votes for you. And I, I'm starting to think that you guys are rigging the polls. It's it's rigged. It's a rigged poll. Fake news. So... Bab won the popular vote. Yeah, did he? <laughs> I mean, Matt won the popular vote, and you're on. <laughs> That's only because Matt couldn't do it. Yeah, couldn't do it. Yeah, he was like, "I'm Not ready to do it." He's like, I-, "I got my YouTube thing going. I'm going to get started again." And then I was like, "All right, we'll do this." And he was like, "Yeah, just I'll, I'll be ready soon." And I was like, "All right," and I'll- and I'm waiting for him to get back to me. And I'm like, "Okay, maybe this will encourage him." So I started a poll, and I knew he was going to win. Because everybody's been dying for him to get on. And then he won. And then he he hits me up and he's like, "Uh, stuff came up. I can't do it. I'm like. And so he's not even doing YouTube now, too. It's like, God damn it. I think, I don't know, probably has something to do with his his work uh, because he's just entered a new job, which is kind of like what I'm trying to get into is, you know, coding, which is what he's doing. R.I.P. Tracy Diaz, by the way, she was a Pizzagate uh, podcaster and YouTuber, and she took down everything, including her episode with Tony Styles, uh, what? off the internet. And, ev- and everyone was like, Oh, she got Ben Swan. Uh, <laughs> and she's being shut up because her, her show about Pizzagate is so dangerous. And she, but no, she took down everything. Cause she's apparently 
taking a break, which I don't understand taking down everything if you're just taking a break. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah, the, the, the Ben Swan thing is kind of curious. Because on one hand... What exactly happened? Okay, so... I don't know this. Okay, so what happened was he... Took, he announced it like, hey, I'm going to take down everything off my uh, my Twitter and uh, Facebook and all this other stuff in one week. Don't worry about me. I'm okay. And then he took down his stuff and then he announced again like, don't worry. Everything's fine. I'm ju- I am just have to do something. I haven't checked to see if he's back up again. Uh, he may be. But uh, I don't know. Um, probably not. But he said that he was okay. Everything was fine. He was he's just taking down his stuff temporarily, and it's still down. And everybody's freaking out because the last thing that he did was the Pizzagate, and there was a lot of controversy around it. And uh, you know, Ben Swan does a lot of good stuff for sure. But then every once in a while, he'll sneak in something in like vaccinations or nine eleven or something, and I'm just like, oh god, please. Wait, stop. vaccinations are nine eleven? This is a new theory. I would definitely like to hear more about. Well, you know, the, the planes did inject themselves into a tower, you know, and back, you know, th- this this was all supposed to be like some big, I don't know, I'm just I'm rambling here. But anyways, this, so 9-11 I mean, like, videos cause autism as well. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, d- does it cause it or did they cause the videos? Well, it's the, a circle. The truth is out there. Um but yeah, the he does all this. Yeah, he does this stuff every once in a while, and I just cringe at it. But then he'll he'll make up for it. It's kind of like um, it's like the inverse of Cantwell, where he just does nothing but terrible things, and every once in a while he'll he'll do something like, "All right, I like what you just did just there," and then he ruins it the next show. <laughs> like I can't tell. Is no, this I really. Crumb or meth? Is this crumb or meth? Yeah, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> when he dies. And it, when he dies, like nine months from now, I am in my Kensington Memorial to Cantwell. I'm not pouring out a forty for him. I'm just, just going to empty my vacuum bag of its crumbs <laughs> onto. onto to, the floor. Just kidding. No one in Kensington owns a, owns a vacuum cleaner. Or just get an incandescent light bulb. Put put some salt in there to get rid of the uh, <laughs> get rid of the 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 soft white powder that's inside, and then dump it out slowly. There you go. <laughs> you got yourself a meth pipe <laughs> in honor of Cantwell. Yep. Rest in peace. Get some rock salt. Yep. Maybe with a bluish tint. Just pour it out. It's beyond me why he made that thing. By the way, I'm not blanking his his name out anymore. It, I think he's pretty much done. Like even his 1488 buddies don't like him. He's anymore. a cringe cow. I completely understand why yeah. people still follow his antics because he's a cringe cow. He was like the he's like that one transsexual tra- transgendered <laughs> communist that was at Occupy Philly. That's in all, that's in all the memes. Who you could oh, follow on Instagram. And, I know who. Yeah, the, the, he was like he's basically they call him the commie Chan, uh, commie Chris Chan, right? He kind of looks like Chris Chan. I guess. Uh, he was in that video where he the the guy was like, oh, like you support. He's like, I'm a Maoist, <laughs> and he yeah, was holding yeah, that yeah, flag, yeah, yeah, and he, yeah. he just looked s- spurgy as fuck. Uh, yeah, Transracial as well. Yeah, <laughs> is he really? <laughs> Yeah, he started he started out a Jewish man and wound up as a Latin woman. <laughs> and I think I think might now be back to man. I don't know. Yeah, they, they tend to they like I don't know, some of them like to change it's back very, and forth. It's very difficult difficult to tell. Yeah, yeah. From from just from someone's Instagram. Yeah, real trans Especially people if, stick with it. They 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 double down on that. Well not double down, it's not the right word. They they're really committed to it. And then all the ones that are just like, Oh, I support trans people and I'm gonna support them by being trans, they usually jump back and they realize like, Oh, it's not for me. Cause like, yeah, In the words of Philadelphia comedian Alejandro Morales, exactly how many lip rings do I need in order before I can reject the gender binary? <laughs> I, I think it's about three. I think <laughs> it's, you get five. Three? it's five. It's wow. five. Wow, I've seen three. Well, it might be different in Vegas. It, it, I think it's. I think it's regional. I think it's similar to the sales tax, where. Depending on how competitively progressive the people are in your area, it's more like I bet you in Manhattan it's like seven or eight. Oh, okay. But in Philly, it's five. It bet where I'm from in Cleveland, it's probably two. You know. Well, Vegas, we have like this history of being. We're not really liberal. Well, I mean, maybe the Vegas area itself, it's a little bit more left leaning than the rest of the state. But the state is kind of libertarian 
to an extent. I mean, we got we got legal hookers and, and blackjack, and now we have legal weed. So it's <laughs> it's a trifecta of libertarianism. But um, yeah, but, but Vegas is really kind of like a show show. Uh, Show off state where everybody's trying to be the weirdest, uh, especially especially on the on the actual uh, strip. Everybody's trying to be as weird as possible so they can get hashtag please donate. So you'd think that it would be more to compensate for that aspect, but I'm noticing probably about three is probably uh, the 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 gender binary thing. Uh, that's when that kicks in. Yeah, yeah, that's when the VTEC kicks in, <laughs> so to speak. Um, yeah, I don't know prison tats. Yeah, this this place is weird, but I love it. It's it's, but you just got to stay away from the strip, and you'll really love it. And I the feel heat. the same way about Kensington. I love I love it. The at the Kensington McDonald's the other day, shouts to them. <laughs> I went to go get a coffee, and I presented the app because on the McDonald's app, which I highly recommend, you can get a, your your sixth coffee beverage. Any coffee beverage you want is free after five after you buy five. So you. What you do is you go, you buy five one dollar coffees, yeah, and then you get a free latte that's like three fifty. Yep. So, you know, yep. And I give her the thing to scan it, and she goes, "Oh, I don't know how to do that. I'm just gonna make your coffee free." And <laughs> I don't know about this technology thing. <laughs> yeah. So she just waved me through. Yep. I should go in there with a Pi and have like an Android thing <laughs> installed on it and be like, here, plug in this your HDMI. They're going to be like, uh, free. <laughs> I'm not even going to try messing with this. Vegas, we're a little bit more, a little bit more on the technology side, I guess, than Kensington. But it's, uh, well, wow, probably... there's a high hurdle to the leap. Yeah. <laughs> Someone, I, I was being introduced at a comedy show one time and somebody called I'm me the two smartest foot taller man than in a Kensington. Midget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The smartest man in Kensington, please. <laughs> I didn't say smarter. I did not say smarter. I will not contend that people no, are No, somebody else smarter. did. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. The 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 McDonald's app in, in Claymont, Delaware right now has the buy one, get one free chicken McNuggets. Jeffrey Tucker, if you're listening, you need to get on this app. Yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey Tucker. Yeah, what is with him and McDonald's? Of all places, McDonald's. Yeah, it, it, McDonald's seems like the kind of place where if you're eating there, something might get on your bow tie, mm -hmm. and it just seems incongruous. But I don't know. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you know, People I'm like not, what they like. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that McDonald's is the worst thing ever. It's not, and I hear they're coming out with the snow crab roll. I'm 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 loving that already. I haven't even tried oh, it yet. Out where even... out where you are, they are. No, they're not. It's not out here yet. It's in the Bay Area. I think that's where they're test marketing it. But I love me some crab. I love me some seafood. But um, yeah. I mean, like the, everybody bashes on McDonald's is like the worst thing ever, and it's not. I, I'm 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 I'll have to say that probably Wendy's is a whole lot worse. And it didn't used to be that way, but they tried to they tried to make themselves a little bit more fancy by using like sweet pickles and shit. And I'm like, dude, their Twitter games fire. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this? No. They, Wendy's has a really sassy uh, person running their Twitter, mm -hmm. and th th their constant people are constantly like, "Hey, Wendy's, I'm at McDonald's. What should I get?" And they're like, "Out." <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> There's a whole video about it on the old tube of views. Uh, I think I, how I many remember people, seeing some stuff about t their Twitter account. But how many, how many people make their living off of YouTube now? Is it is it billions? And is it as many people as there are pro activists? All right. So I'll tell you how to, to be. And this is coming from someone who has only had like what tw uh, 1200 subscribers i know how to do it i'm just not gonna like stoop that low but it's really easy and i kind of already made an instructional video kind of a satire video but it's true if you follow this instruction you could make a living off youtube it's basically you construct a character your character has to be wearing a suit and tie of some sort any kind you know any kind of suit and tie uh, a tuxedo a three-piece suit any one of these things and then you put something unconventional as a head, uh, preferably a knight, uh, a knight helmet, and you put that on top 
of of and that and replace it as your head, and that's your new avatar. And then you think of some sort of clever name for your for your thing, like Doctor Dick or Mister Dapperton or um, what's some of the other ones? <laughs> like they always got these kind of dumb names, and they're it's always kind of like they're a de- um, d- uh, undoomed. The but, amazing atheist. No, he doesn't do that. He's 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 a little bit more respectful in that area. Um, and then and then you basically. Um, Instead of going after like a nuanced opinion, you go you go to the well, and the well is social justice warriors, and then you don't really actually refute anything they have to say because you're going after really the bottom of the barrel when it comes to SJWs. It's not like Nita Sarkeesian where she's try, at least trying to present some actual arguments. You go after the ones going like, "Oh, there's 800 million genders because I say so," and then you just laugh at them and like this fake scripted laugh. And then just go, wow, these people are crazy. And that's it. You put, make sure that it's more, 10 minutes long. You upload it at a certain time to kind of trick uh, YouTube's algorithms to promote your video more. And then there you go. You appeal to the lowest bot common denominator and there you go. You don't, you don't even have to be funny. You don't have to use any of that comedic wit. And in fact, the more comedic wit you use, the less chance that your, that your account will be successful. You know, unless you want to do something really. Yeah, people don't like that. No, no. You gotta you gotta do really stupid things. Um, you could also make adorable puppy compilations. <laughs> but then you're running into the fair use thing. Vines, on the other hand, <laughs> Vine compilations, those things go crazy. And every time I get suckered in, because they'll they'll usually have like a picture of a butt, like a girl's butt, and you're like, ooh, I'll click that, and you'll watch it. And it's just the it's the worst thing ever. Vines are literally Hitler of of comedy. They're the worst thing ever. It's right up there with, uh, I don't know, uh, who's the the only comic? similar video I ever got lured into was the finger blasting in public compilation. What? I don't know what a finger blast so, is. P- I don't know what that that's is. That's where, that's where you stick your fingers in someone's vagina in public. <sighs> finger blasting, and. Uh, it's this great video, highly recommended. Uh, some of the greatest finger blasts ever caught on video. And a lot of it is people posing Lindy England style next to <laughs> these usually drunk people that are finger blasting in public. Oh, shit. Okay, so the other thing that you can do on YouTube to get a lot famous is uh, prank videos. And they're not really pranks. They're not <laughs> like a prank is when like yeah. you you have like a dollar bill and you tape it with a piece of fishing line and then when someone goes down and pick it up you like pull the line and then you just watch watch them chase a, a dollar bill across the street and you're like haha pranked that's a prank these aren't pranks basically you go to like really low income African American communities or Af- African American. For all I know, they could actually be from Africa. So they're probably not even American, right? <laughs> so, but black neighborhoods. And you go into a black neighborhood and you walk up to them and say, hey, N-word, and get the crap beat out of you. And you just go like, oh, it's a prank, bro. Bro, it's a prank. It's a or prank, you, bro. Or you step on their on their new, nice shoes and get the, your ass beat. <laughs> it's a prank. Or you could do the Joey Salads thing where you just say like, oh, black people are absolutely terrible. I'm going to go park my car with the Trump stickers somewhere in a black neighborhood. And, oh, look, they're they're smashing my vehicle. And it turns out, like, you pay these people to do it. <laughs> it just, yeah. So that's how you, that's another way of getting witch off YouTube. Prank videos. I was walking in the Italian market in Philadelphia one time. And this guy was at a cafe minding his own business, reading a book. And this guy walks up from down the street it was an open air cafe and he takes the guy's coffee pours it all over his book and says yeah that's what you get and then the dude chases after him and he goes it was a prank it was a prank look there's a camera <laughs> like that makes it any better like oh so not only did you insult me and ruin my coffee it was a textbook too you're gonna yeah. actually upload it to youtube that makes it so much. That's like <laughs> I wonder if there was anybody who was oh, ever like, "Oh, cool. it was a prank." Oh, you got me good. No, yeah, no, no, sure no. showed me. There was like this um, one of these guys I worked with. He, not him, but his one of his friends does a show. I think it's called like um, 
it's something five. And it's funny because there's not five people in it. It's just two people. And they're here in Vegas and they'll go to the strip and they'll like, he'll be like, oh, will you marry me? Like they'll go up to women and be like, will you marry me? And like slip a, a ring on their finger. And then they realize like, oh, it's a cock ring. And I'm like, okay, see, that's a prank, right? That's a that's an actual prank. You prank someone. You fool them into like, whatever. They're kind of cringed out and they're, they realize, oh, I'm being pranked. Going up to someone and insulting them and pouring coffee on their lap. That's not a prank. That's just being a jackass. <laughs> being a using dick. That. Yeah, being a dick and trying to pull like and then and it's it, the same sort of people who always excuse their being a dick as well oh, I, I was just being funny yeah it was it was, it was I, jokes man i have relatives it's that do satire. that though. like their idea get get <laughs> get someone pissed off they'll be like har 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 oh man i really got them i uh you know i told them their kid was ugly and yeah <laughs> <laughs> your kid's ugly he do it was a prank bro the other thing that pisses me off is like people will say like, "Oh, it was sad." Like they'll they'll have a bad opinion, a terrible opinion, and they're really genuine and sincere about it. And then when their backlash comes, they'll say, "Oh, it was satire." And they don't under and uh, <laughs> they like it's like none of them understand what actual satire is. They'll just they'll just back they'll just say that as a backpedal. And for me. I actually do, like that's what my comedy specialty is is satire. I'm not really good on on you are on my feet kind of like quick clever responses to thing. I, that's not what my thing is. It's just I'll see something and I'm really good at like okay, what is the inverse of that? How can I twist that to make a make a point and be funny? I can do that. That's that's my specialty. So when so when someone actually like claims like oh it's satire, it's like well I'm an actual satirist. Explain to me what the definition of satire, satire is and how that applies to that definition. And usually <laughs> everybody just kind of runs away at that point. But, yeah, I, I that one thing that drives me nuts is like it's a joke, whatever. It's a satire. All right. Now you're in my domain. <laughs> you're full of shit. Sorry. The wind is blowing like a motherfucker here. Yeah. I don't know if we got a hurricane or what. In Delaware? Hi. Yep. We're in Delaware. Hi. We're in Delaware, and man, is the wind blowing. It's, it's like another Sandy. <laughs> it's like another Sandy Hook. It's like another Sandy Hook. It's like another Hurricane the, the, Sandy Hook. <laughs> the government made the wind blow. Yeah. I need a Truth or Elvis song about Sandy Hook is what I need to really get the assholes clench it. <laughs> Yeah, like Sandy Hurricane Sandy didn't really happen. It was all crisis actors, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's why they demolished the building afterward. The movie we need to talk about Sandy Hook is funny. They have like graphics from Microsoft Paint, and yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, there's a I Sandy a Hook t- movie. I know there's a Tetris well, it's movie. On, it's on YouTube. It's wow. not a movie movie. I know they're making a three-part Tetris film. Uh, I think that's the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. I mean, I thought Bat- Battleship would, would be a terrible movie, but I think it, that, that there's a way to make a movie out of that because it's about battleships. You can just so, say, long as, so long as you're still on Team Angry Birds. <laughs> is, yeah, but see, there was things going on in Angry Birds to make a movie out of, right? Battleship. There's actually things that make like, immigrants. Okay, you could be like, okay, we're gonna have a battleship movie. We'll capitalize off the game. We'll skip the parts about like oh B five hit B seven miss. Like we could skip that part and make a movie about like okay, there's submarines. There's stuff we the submarine. You can make movies out of submarine fi- fights. Okay, I can get that. But how do you make a movie about blocks falling from the sky without it being like a stupid pixel movie, right? I don't it's understand. a line. It's a line. It's a line. <laughs> he made an unbroken row. It disappears. Oh, oh! Look at this weird Russian opera music they're playing. Oh, the Nutcracker Suite. And it needs three movies <laughs> to, to get the whole story across. They're making a trilogy. It's a. Th- they said there was too much stuff to fit in one movie, so they're going to make it a trilogy. About yeah, the first. The first Tetris. one is called just just a square and then the next one is called the one that looks like an l that you could rotate and then yeah <laughs> the one that looks like a t and then the 
Can and I get they a... might be able to fit that one in with just straight line. And wait, wait till the prequel comes out. Can I get a long one, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's the porn parody. Yeah, <laughs> it's the porn. It, not not another Tetris movie. XXX. Can I get a long one, please? Copyright. I'm Tetris I'm taking me all that. night long. Do not. St- I swear to God, if that comes out. I will. <laughs> I will make a. I'll make a YouTube video exposing it. They read my mind. The interdimensional portal aliens listen to this podcast, and they're making a pedophile ring fi- porno film. They read my iTunes. Yeah. If you iTunes. could read my iTunes, what a tale my thoughts would tell. Is that an Elvis song? <laughs> that's, that's Gordon Lightfoot. I I don't know what that is. You don't know who Gordon Lightfoot is? I don't. Listen I guess you to live this. that far from Canada. I don't listen to that country western. Is that what it is? He's not country. He's folk. He's like folk rock. He's Canadian. He's the most successful Canadian artist of all time, other than maybe, you know, Brian Adams. Look, there's only two folk albums. Canucks. Like, there's only two uh, folk artists that I care about. It's Bob Dylan and whatever those guys who made Aeroplane Over the Sky. Was, uh, maybe that's the name of the band. I don't know. And the only reason I know who they are is because I don't like that album and I think it's overrated. But everybody else loves it. Then they can go take their tambourine Bob head Dylan's goes, performing here in Delaware at the Firefly Festival yeah, this summer. Yeah, if he's... Yeah, jet flames going burn the building inside the <laughs> Hey, Mr. Jet Fuel, man. <laughs> right? Isn't there a rapper named B.O.B. who believes the earth is flat? I'm pretty sure there is. Um, Have you seen the political compass that came out with the rappers? No. Oh, no, I did. Several. I did. I just yeah. vaguely remember it. And I remember it this making is the first no time sense. I've ever. I very rarely find myself in the upper left quadrant of these political maps, but that's where ICP was. So where where ICP goes, I will blindly follow like someone who's done inhalants for 30 years, a.k.a. the rest of the Juggalos. Whoop, whoop. I'm, wouldn't, I think Juggalos would probably be in the lower left quadrant, wouldn't it be? I would More think the so. More the Ancommies? Because a lot of them are kind whoop, of whoop. poor. And they want to they wanted to just do drugs and hang out in the middle of the forest and, and battle rap. Ancom, Ancom Juggalos are how Trump got elected. Yeah, I, th- I think. I'm sorry. I think that's where they, they should be. I don't, I don't buy them in the upper right quadrant or upper left don't quadrant. Don't tell me where Juggalos should be. Check your non-Juggalo privilege. <laughs> Is that, is that is that the privilege? Yeah, it not being not being a juggalo is definitely a privilege people enjoy in society. Then explain to me why I, these people are so popular. I exist. <laughs> my life exists at the intersection of sumo sexuality and juggalism. So that's you know, a really as an intersectional corner. juggalist <laughs> filled with Samoans. Or 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 was it Mexican dudes that are so fat their eyelids fold over like they're Asian? Yeah. Oh yeah. All day long. Yeah, that was my lifeblood for a little while. But now you know I've calmed my ways. It's the day before Valentine's Day. Oh Valentine's Day. Oh, you know I'm gonna be on the the fiends uh, on Valentine's morning. I'm not gonna be there at night. Uh, I got plans, and I'm sure you got plans too. That's probably why you're in Delaware. You, you you're Hi. taking your raspberry pie out for dinner. You know it. Oh, don't even don't even start. Don't bash her. Don't don't bash my SL. Don't. I'm sorry. Don't do it. You're like you're you're like with those people with real dolls with on my strange addiction. You know what? I got this little raspberry pie zero, and I'm gonna build an AI for that thing. And the only thing it's gonna ask me to do is like <laughs> is like, do you want me to clean? Do you want me to give you want me to clean your uh, your penis instead? Wow. This is a family show, Jim. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's a prank, bro. Um what about that what about that <laughs> ad time we bought on the Lutheran hour? <laughs> oh god, please tell me I could buy ads on a, <laughs> on a Christian network. <laughs> of course you can. It's cheap. Oh shit. Yeah. I don't I don't I, I don't know how much they let you curse in the ad, but it, as long as yeah, no, I'll I'll, I'll just they, kind of retrofit like, oh, the Lulberts, we're a Christian podcast, Lull, lulling at. There's got to be a Bert somewhere in that Bible. 
There's got to be a Bert. Is a there bird? a Bert in the Bible? You're you're the theologian here, right? No, there's no Bert in the Bible. That's no. Okay, well, the, well unless you, G, Jim is short for Bertholomew. James. <laughs> Surely there's a Bertholomew. Yeah, there's a Bertholomew in there. We'll just say his name is Bert. The little Bertholomews. You know, like Jimothy or something. The, I don't know. <laughs> Jimothy. <laughs> There's got to be something we can retrofit in there and be like, oh, yeah, we're a lovely Christian podcast. And then, of course, uh, have our very first very first advertisement. The immediate <laughs> – the first time we do a show, we're like the first thing out of our mouth is, man, God's a dick. <laughs> not – not uh, it, 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 needs, it needs more spice. Uh, it, it's it, the dank account could be risen to. I don't know. We'll have to th- we'll have to think this prank out a little yeah, more. Yeah. But. This, and then, of course, when we get the hate mail, we just say it's a prank, bro. In my mom's town, there is an area where you can buy billboard space for, I think maybe like thirty dollars a month or something like that. And there is a huge amount of Amish people that drive their buggies down the road. <laughs> Where it is. So if you wanted to advertise the podcast to Amish people, that could potentially be fruitful. It would be like getting the votes of libertarians. Think about that for a second. Amish people podcast. There's a disconnect somewhere in there, and I'm sure you'll think of it (laughs) in five, four. They make their own raspberry pies. What's the problem? (laughs) Out of the finest woods. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> to, to the I guess that's like the uh, the that's where they um they have a coding bee. Yeah, they <laughs> coding, they have their own code boot camp. <laughs> all, all all the fattest, most neck bearded Amish get together, and everybody else just cooks for them. You know, in Minecraft, they have like this thing Cheering called redstone, up. and uh, you can kind of make things with this redstone. It's basically kind of like. Uh, it's like a game version of actual circuitry. And so you can actually build your own kind of like circuit boards using this redstone stuff inside the game. Uh, I never really got, I, I was trying to get into it. Then I was like, you know what? I could just do this in real life and just get it over with. <laughs> but it kind of, it's kind of like to teach kids like how circuitry works. Anyways, I bet uh, that's if, if Amish people did do something, it would basically like be that same thing, you know, where it's like, oh, we have this circ, we have this computer and you go out and it's like an acre Full of like this, <laughs> like kind of like uh, like iron ore <laughs> that just, they just sprinkled in lines <laughs> going here. Like, oh, we made this kind of repeater thing out of iron ore and stone. I'm sure. I'm sure it exists. They're Amish. Yeah, I'm sure that if they had a computer, it'd be just like that. Like, oh, we made we made a raspberry pie. It's the same thing. They just made it a little bit like oh, in half an acre <laughs> instead of a full acre. Raspberry yeah, Pi. They know about the internet, the Amish do. I'm sure they're aware of it, but they have like yep, this they, uh, they, electricity phobia. So I, that's that's the that's the big disconnect. However, you control yeah, them. It just makes ways. people prideful, you know? Yeah. I can't I can't tell you how many times I just rolled or walked around and I was like, dang, I'm really someone special because I have electricity. Yeah. Well, you, I guess you kind of, you do kind of get that when you get a brand new phone, when you get the latest iPhone or something like that. You're like, oh snap, I got the S7. What up? And then you know, every, you know the S the S8 comes out, and you're like, oh whatever. At least I didn't get that note. Pride cometh before a fall. See, yeah. you didn't listen to Father Zebediah when he told you, did you? No, the pride would have been if I bought the note and it exploded on me. That would have been God punishing me for pride. But instead, I, I downgraded. Just got, I was like, I'll oh, just get the regular phone and not the one, not the phablet. <laughs> and God, God, God came to uh, uh, bestowed upon me great fortune. And uh, the, everybody else, he, he, uh, he smited them with exploding phones. And then, of course, everybody gave them to ISIS and ISIS used them in bombs. Yep. I'm telling you, we the the, uh, the podcast and libertarian and comedy communities all need to go study these shunning procedures and the shunning ceremonies that the Amish have, where oh, they all literally turn their back on someone and then never speak to them ever again and act as if they are dead. Uh, you could learn a thing or two from, from the way they shun. Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, you know what? I... I was I was thinking about this today because Ademo Freeman, who started Cop Block, 
who which I I I love cop block. I love what they do. I just have always been like against the idea that this should be ran by by what looked like meathead hippies. If you see these guys, they look yep. like ripped buff guys with long beards and you know they're wearing like hemp necklaces and shit and 10 million tattoos yeah and i've always had kind of ones yeah I've, I've always been kind of against that like why can't we just get someone who looks like jeffrey tucker to at least head the organization they could be actually be running the show but the guy they throw on tv needs to look you know like you know someone like jeffrey tucker you know someone that's respectable. and then there's dumb fuck decisions like hey the uh i know that my rear Brake lights don't work, so why don't I drive around with a bunch of drugs? And that's why he's in jail. <laughs> and now everybody, of course, all the anti-cop blockers are using that. Like, oh, look, see, that's why they're anti. That's why they're anti-cops because they want to sell drugs. That the know. only reason anyone could oppose the cops is because they're a they're a drug kingpin. That's yeah. exactly the take home. Yep. yep, and and but you know what I, and I was like and I, I made this post on Facebook like oh yeah like and it was basically just that same sentiment I wish it was someone else you know I wish it was other people and I completely forgot about who Ademo Freeman was and what he did to Josie Wales and like all the other crappy things he's done to people and it's kind of hard to keep track of all the shitty things that libertarians do and I, I've even done this with Kokesh like I just completely like forgot like oh yeah that's right he ripped off Derek Freeman <laughs> like he completely I, it escapes me every once in a while, and I just kind of think like, "Oh no, yeah, he's 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 kind of a dummy, but you know, he does some good things." No, wait, he doesn't. <laughs> and in fact, no. he does some very terrible things all the time. Why do I keep forgetting? Yep. It's so hard to keep track. Because what is it like? What what did Michael say? It's like liberty is where sociopaths go to hide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one's gonna call the cops. No one's gonna call the cops. No one ever. You know, Jeff Berwick is, I mean, Tatiana was caught up in Gold's Gold's Chili, right? And I didn't see this episode, but I saw it in my in my feed, and I just never got around to watching it because I just can't stand looking at Jeff Berwick's face because just knowing who he is. But she was, like, personally ripped off in Gold's Gold's Chili, and she was the one that was blowing blowing the whistle, and everybody was ignoring her, but she still brought the guy on. And I, I don't know if she called him out or anything but i know she was accusing ken johnson of being responsible but come on we all we all know bearwick had a hand in taking some of that money come on (laughs) allegedly where's my phone allegedly where is my alleged phone yeah where's where's my phone i need to have this because if i don't do this uh then i'm gonna get an angry email from Michael Dean, because we report we recorded the podcast before I was really kind of aware of what was going on. I have it. I swear to God. <laughs> uh, here we go. The Michael W. Dean, the Podfather. He, the Podfather. He of said soul. that he fixed. Oh, I have the media down. That's why. Allegedly. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah. Allegedly stole money. <laughs> From people who called Gold Chile. We don't know we don't know officially. And a bunch of other sources too. This is not a dude who yeah. makes his living performing upright services from all the looks of it. Yeah, and the and the passport thing. Uh which was a uh the passport thing, which was a scam. Allegedly. Not a guarantee. So um <laughs> yeah. You gotta love you gotta love an anarchist whose whose business model is bribing government officials. Yes, but you know what? That part does not bother me. That part does not bother me. What bothers me is that people dump like all these kind all this kind of money. Was and, they never got them? Yeah, not just not got them, but under the under the the false assumption that that these com- things were completely above board, that they weren't bribing government officials, that they were doing it all legally and you know above board. It wasn't. It was all through bribes, and the person got caught bribing, and they were found to be innocent. Or they were found to be innocent, but you know, lots of people get off. I mean, OJ got off, right? Do you really believe that he was innocent? Come on, do you? And I also, I, I love this thing where whenever you find a libertarian scammer, people won't believe it until they've been convicted of something. Like they, they're libertarians who need the seal of approval from the government before they can believe something. Yeah, do, don't. Look at evidence for yourself. Wait until a random jury of people that the prosecution could pick. 
Yeah, and then and then, uh, and then once once you prove it, then they're like, "Oh no, see, look, if you look at the at the court hearing, it's sure they found them guilty, but like, look at this word right here. It seems a little itchy. It's like, no, they still were found guilty of that crime. Look, it says on there they were guilty of this crime. They pled guilty to all of these charges. It's like, yeah, but you know, it's it said that they were suspended, but not, <laughs> but <laughs> but they suspended the suspension, so they weren't really suspended. It's like, God." Really? <laughs> like, no, you're wrong. You're absolutely Racism. wrong. Like, I, I got that with the Molyneux thing. It was like the, uh, the, uh, um, what was it? The, uh, yeah, the when, when his wife the was reprimanded. Job. No, the, co- uh, no, the uh, wife was reprimanded. And I was like, their wife was reprimanded. You can't say on one hand that this was completely okay in the realm of this thing. And then she got in trouble for it, but she didn't, her suspension was suspended. But she pled guilty, <laughs> and she was suspended, <laughs> regardless. If it was suspended, and then and then when they finally doubled you down, you only on believe it, that because your parents spanked you. And then when they finally realize, like, okay, I'm wrong, and then they go, well, it's it's the government, so it sucks. It's like, yeah, but that's what we were talking about <laughs> to begin with, right? It's like you said it was legal and above board, according, even according to the government. And now you realize, like, oh, no, that's not true. And he was lying about that. Uh, but but it's the government. But it's like, but that was the point. <laughs> that was the point. Like you were trying to defend it. Like, it's even okay according to the government. And Bear, they're going to do the same thing with Berwick. It's like, yeah, well, you know what? In a free market, they should have read the contract. That's what it's going to come down to. If he, if he <laughs> <laughs> when, it, when it does come down to it. Hey, they I basically that abducted contract. my girlfriend, stopped her from ever getting anywhere, but hey, I made her sign a contract. Yep. So, <laughs> guess we're cool. Yeah. That's what it all boils down to in the end. They're, they're going to find something in the end. And I forgot where I was going with that. If Kokesh runs in 2020, I want this to I want this put out there already. If Kokesh runs in 2020, there is a dumpster full of parking lot memes about him jerking off in parking lots that are it's just on ready fire. to be visited. That dumpster upon is the world. on fire. The dumpster is on yep. fire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's already the kindling is already there. Yeah. I just need some accelerant and that's his campaign. You know, if but there there has to be like and an some army sort of neckbeards. There has to be some sort of resource that reminds us all like, oh, it, like we could just Google like what are all the things that they were they they were allegedly convict uh, convicted of in the court of a public opinion. That's what needs to be done because I can't even I can't even remember Ademo Freeman and I well I don't really you talk to her, talk to her more than I do, uh, but I have occasionally talked to her, <laughs> Josie Wales, you know. So I don't know. It, it's it's hard to keep up. There's just so many things going on, and it comes to the point every once in a while where I have to like ask. MK Lords like uh was this person a scammer? <laughs> I forget and she'll remind me like Or just a yeah. shit bag. Yeah. She'll know is this, it. Is, is this person Yeah. She, but the other thing the other thing with the Demo Freeman that kind of got glossed over is that he tried charging people an exorbitant sum of money in order to be retweeted by the cop block page. <laughs> and anytime you hear an activist talk about monetizing their internet presence, uh you need to you know you're dealing with somebody who has zero grasp on economics, business, anything of the sort. Yeah. So we're and, I've at- never met a pro activist. I've never met a professional activist who was not either one selling drugs, which was his case, or two constantly uh suckling up to the teat of please donate. Yeah. Where everything all the time was give me money, give me money, give me money. I don't produce anything. Give me money. Give me money. Give me money. Yeah, I, you know what? I've sold drugs. I'll, I'll admit it. Like I sold drugs. It was in the past, uh, more than seven years. So it's too late now, <clears throat> allegedly. Anyways, um, but you know, like when I when I was doing that stuff, I was not heading an organization that was supposed to be like, oh, we're just trying to keep government accountability and all this other stuff. You know, I wasn't putting myself yeah. as a giant target for the state. In fact, if anything, I was just kind of like making stuff on YouTube every once in a while, like, oh, the Zeitgeist movement. It's terrible. <laughs> but you know if anything the government there's something like, you know. to be said for being boring you yeah. know uh the, the, it, by god i can remember a time where politicians used to be really boring and not put us at the you know 
at at the precipice of war every 15 minutes. Yeah. And there 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 was something to be said for that. And and politics was boring. People got mad about punk rock music and you know, other things. Conservatism and, is new the new punk rock, right? <laughs> the new counterculture. Oh god, that's 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 the saddest thing I've ever heard. But no. yes. But uh, I don't know. We should probably – should we talk about Milo for a second? Because everybody's like freaking out about sure. Milo, including uh, Ben Carson. <laughs> and I know, ben like, a lot Carson's of... freaking out about Milo? Okay. So you know what ha- – we, we, I think we, we talked about this in the last episode. But uh, Milo Yenov This is like an NBA jam where you can play players from 50 years ago. It's just this like oh, very odd matchup in – public figures but did sure. you ever okay, play Milo NBA, and Ben Carson yeah. you, you ever play what NBA does Linda Jam? Ronstadt have to say on the matter yeah I loved NBA Jam <laughs> yeah did you ever play as P-Funk <laughs> George Clinton I never played as P-Funk but there's a great stand-up bit by Ryan Shaner about how uh he lost his virginity the same time he discovered NBA Jam so he just talked <laughs> like Marv Albert the entire time like boom shakalaka he's going postal yeah, yeah. um <laughs> from downtown <laughs> Uh, I'm going to play that game while this is rendering a oh, video. Anyways, so Milo Yiannopoulos was going to speak at Berkeley for, to 500 people, uh, but they rioted. Instead, he got to talk to you know 300 million people instead uh, through the magic of television because everybody was wondering what the hell was, he was saying that was so absolutely terrible. Um, but so I, I, I guess like during one of his speeches, he had like this billboard, allegedly. I don't know if it's true, but I've seen the picture. And it had like this thing like, oh, if you see an illegal immigrant, call ICE. And it had the number. And because one time he incited people to call ICE, uh, I-C-E, which what is that I-C-E? I don't even know what that is. I knew it. I know it's like you know, with of, I-C-E, like, sir, come with me. I know it's like it's, immigration. It's immigration, immigration customs enforcement. OK. And because he did that once, we can presume that he's going to do that at every speaking engagement. And because snitches get stitches. Uh, he's in violating the NAP, right? And so because he's violating the NAP, it was totally justified. All comes back to the NAP. <sighs> oh, I'm gonna, I'm doing a whole show about the NAP tonight. So mm, that's, nap tartary. Oh yeah, and I'm I, I and I am on the side of I am not a napper. <laughs> I don't I don't, uh, I don't believe it's a very valid axiom. Anyway, I'm not gonna get into that, but I will say like. Uh, that no, uh, you you can't just assume that okay one time, Milo violated the NAP, so it's okay to riot uh, because he's going to do it again. He's not. In fact, his speech was going to be about cultural appropriation. He even got, I guess, he was like bragging about how he got this beautiful headdress, uh, Indian headdress that he was going to wear, and it's had embroiled his names on on everything. It was absolutely fabulous. Uh, but he was going to do that. It was still talking you can say your speech was going to be about anything though if it never happened. Yeah. Yeah, so you, uh, how, how do you prove a negative? Yeah, and I've seen other lots of speeches by him. Uh, I don't agree with a lot of what he says. I think he's he's a jackass for the most part. I think he's he's basically trying to do what uh, what's his name Ben Shapiro does unintentionally, intentionally. Uh, but he he even says like that's what his goal is is to be a little bit provocative and get a, get a. a an even even worse reaction from the left so that he can use that to say like look i just came up here to talk about cultural appropriation sure i'm a little bit edgy but look what they did they pulled the fire alarms they rioted they you know and they're falling right into his trap and everybody's like running around with this saying like no it was completely justified because he's a white supremacist but now they're saying it's a false flag and i love this <laughs> oh, yeah. Robert Reich, that one was great former labor secretary is saying that 150 people came in on buses and that who knows who sent them could have been those spooky feds. <laughs> and oh, what about the Arme- yeah. uh What about the uh, Holocaust deniers over at the uh, TYT who was also saying the exact same thing? <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah. Is, the is young that Turks. one of their lines now as well? Yeah. Yeah. They're great. Yeah, they're like, oh, they're, 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 like, like, no, that's some serious, like, Alex Jones shit. <laughs> well, I don't know. To- Alex Jones really topped himself on Alex, uh, on Joe Rogan, but next to that, <laughs> that's some pretty uh, Alex Jones stuff right there, right? 
It's it's, it's yeah. the right wingers. They're they're trying to make us look bad. It's like no, you should really look into Antifa. They they've been around forever. They've been doing this forever. It's kind of like Scientology. You know, like they're still kind of using like eighteen hundreds <laughs> pre internet technology to 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 show resistance to stuff that doesn't work and it just makes them look bad now. Now that we live in the uh, age of techno- uh, age of information, but yeah, you could look them up in five minutes and yep. They're there. They're all there. They were all arrested. And they were arre- the, I think they arrested what, like 200 of them in Washington DC. Not a bad haul. That's a pretty damn good haul. They, that's pretty much almost all of them. Pretty much almost. I had the under at 300 on that that's bet by right. the way. But they had I think it was like 212 or something like that that they that they nabbed. And uh I still haven't read the report. Uh, it turns out they actually had like white supremacy or Donald Trump MAGA hats or anything like that. Nothing, nothing came out of that. And the other thing is this whole shit about Milo being a white supremacist. I, I can't even wrap my head around that level of stupid. Like I, I'm, I'm not a fan of what he says. I've listened to a lot of what he says. I've listened to his speeches, not the biggest fan, but to calling him a white supremacist, that's a little beyond the pale. Especially considering, well, it's because he does this edgy. This no, it's because he does this edgy racial thing. Yeah, where he's like, I'm going to talk about all the crimes committed by blacks. Oof, I'll sell you the entire seat, but you only need the edge. Uh, (laughs) It's it's alt right retardation, and then he gets off by by saying, "Oh, I'm I'm not I'm not all." I'm not all right. Yeah, well, he he was using that term for a while. I think he was trying to co-opt it as well as Breitbart. There's never once been an alt right person in this country. Everyone says, "Oh, I'm not alt right." You know, it's yeah, yeah. But yeah, the alt right has the explicit meaning. It's white nationalism, which is different than white supremacism. The differences are very nuanced, uh, but you know, for the most part, give some due respect. Like, don't call people neoliberals. No one really calls them when they don't call themselves that, which is pretty much no one calls themselves that. But I, I you know, maybe I, Bill Crystal. Yeah, but I mean, like, if they're going to be like, "Oh, we're not, we're not this now, we're this," then just like, no, okay, that's absolute garbage. It's still white nationalism. You're just giving it a new name. That's you know, <laughs> that doesn't have negative connotations. But I mean, I have never heard him actually say anything like, "Oh, we need to be a racially homogenous society," which would encompass either of those things. He's never said that. He's always been against the na- ethno state. Always. Um, and he's a gay Jew who loves black guys. Can we please <laughs> just stop with the white nationalist shit? You know, Steve Bannon is not a white nationalist. He's terrible, absolutely terrible in every way, but not a white nationalist. I would, I would not at all be like. The, it wouldn't Milo surprise me if it came out, but totally unneeded. But at the same time, like Steve Bannon hired, had on his payroll, and was good friends with for a long time. Ben Shapiro, who's like the biggest Jew ever. <laughs> I mean, like you want to talk about Jewy people. That guy never takes off his yarmulke ever. <laughs> like even when he goes out and does speeches or he goes on TV or I think he even does it when he's at work at the Daily Wire. He's still always sporting that yarmulke. And I'm supposed to believe that this guy is some secret anti-Semite with him on the payroll. It does not make any sense. Ben Shapiro is the short dude at every gay bar. Yeah. He do, he does kind of come <laughs> seem like someone who would like I don't know I'm not gonna get into it I do like Ben Shapiro I don't agree with him on everything but I do like him I just don't like Milo because I think Milo is just trying to be a rip off of he could put him. To, he could put together a cogent argument and he has a business model that is not Milo's business model yeah. of trigger the easiest trigger <laughs> people on earth like people act like it's some sort of achievement that he goes and offends people that yeah. Wake up every day looking for something to be mad about. Yeah, because uh, that's that that, does, that doesn't really take much talent. Ben does that too, but that's not what he is. Because but he'll have people who are a little bit more rational. I, that's kind of a stretch to say SJWs, but people you know who who can at least kind of coach, put some sort of cogent ideology together to to rebut him, and he'll. And also Rebut repeat that. people beliefs back to them in a British accent. That's also a crucial part yeah. of the business model as well. <laughs> Make shitty people feel sophisticated yeah. by hearing their beliefs repeated back to them, but in British. So they think, man, I'm upscale. Uh, I'm so much better than all those other people. I mean, look, we have this. And then John Oliver performs the same thing under the guise of humor and what people call John Oliver a comedian. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, man, do my hands get oh. stranglers itch. I, oh I saw God. his stand up. It was absolute dog shit. 
just uh, his show is dog shit. Like, like there was he did like this thing about MSMs, and I'm totally on board with it. Like, m- m- multi level marketing, MSM, no a- MLMs, MLM. Uh, multi-level marketing, which is a complete sham. He's absolutely right about that. It's a total scam. It's it's basically a pyramid scheme with with you know you're just laundering the money through through product. It was absolutely perfect, and I shared the video, and I was like, this is perfect. Like it, it, he completely deconstructed it, but all of his jokes, all of them fell flat. And I even when I agreed with them, I was like, this guy is completely unfunny. Well, at the same time, Bill Maher. I'm sorry, I don't care what you think, but I think Bill Maher is fucking hilarious. Even when I disagree with oh, them. Oh, I do too. Yeah. Even when I disagree yeah. with them, I'm left in stitches. <laughs> like every- I like that he's a pro smug asshole now. Mm-hmm. Like he's a professional. He's a, he, he sneers professionally. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a good role for him. So yeah, like and and you need somebody funny performing that role because if you, if you have somebody who's not funny, then you wind up with shit like the Young Turks. Yeah. Oh, and... there was one thing I need to say because when the first time I had MK Lords on, I said that Samantha B was probably the funniest one that came out of the Daily Show. I am officially retracting that because like the what I've seen was funny. But everything I've seen since, ever since I re- put that episode out, everything has been just absolute unfunny garbage. It's like even worse than John Oliver. I have not laughed at Samantha B one single t- – and I gave her ample tr- ample opportunities. I watched a couple of her episodes like, I I knew this was funny. Why isn't it making me laugh? <laughs> None of it's making me laugh. It's horrible. I want to officially retract my statement on that. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry to, inter- so- sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure I interrupted. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's it. Yeah, she sucks. Yeah, she sucks. that's it. Yep. Is there anything else you wanted? She, she sucks. Anything else you wanted to talk about? Because uh, we have I been going for like offhand. almost. Uh, this is probably going to be one of our longest shows. So an hour and twenty yeah, minutes. It's like so an far. hour. Yeah. yeah. And it's I got like a, a hardcore history. <laughs> oh man, I do, I've been listening to this podcast about the Intellivision gaming console <laughs> from like 1979 it was like a rival to atari every single one of those episodes is anywhere from four and a half to seven hours long and they're great they also sound great it's entertaining but i'm sitting there thinking like man if the lawberts was this bad by like hour three i'd be dead because <laughs> i'm not editing <laughs> i like producing one long segment get it all done yeah yeah, get it done. Get her, get her done. No advertisements, no breaks, no nothing. Uh, but I will say, yeah, like if you want to win that flag, go to iTunes and or Stitcher and leave a four or five star comment. The funniest one wins. We'll review them. I don't know how we're gonna verify that's the person. We'll figure it out. There's got to be some way. Um, yeah. Well, and on, I also got a, a bunch of other on, I, on iTunes. There's a name, so that's easy to. That's relatively easy to verify. Yeah, that is true. So we'll do that. Yeah, so. That's a thing. And then get them in as soon as possible. And then when we figure out it's kind of petered off or something like that, then we'll review them. And, uh, yeah, I got, like, some flags. I think I got a Libertarians Against Humanity. I don't know what's inside that bag. But the flag is definitely in there. There's a whole bunch of other goodies. Stickers. Uh, Fiends buttons. Because uh, Michael Dean just can't stop sending me buttons. Thanks to you. And, Yeah. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Five for Bless fifteen. I, 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 we you fought for fifteen, and I got fifteen hundred. So I oh. mean, it rains buttons from Michael Dean. Rains it doesn't. Uh, it pours actually. But in the words of Luke Bryan, rain is a good thing. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Was there anything else that I wanted to get out before? Because I had like a whole bunch of stuff, and I was like, I didn't talk about any of these things. Oh no, I think I got everything. It was Samantha B, the contest, and. Uh, and and the pie setup. Yep, that's it. Worm. Yep. Just didn't know. Damn worms. It. Fuck. Uh, I'm gonna get to a show where I don't say worms. I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna post a sticky note on my damn computer. But thanks, Steve. Thanks, thanks for coming on. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Have a good day.
Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the Bipcot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lowbirds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this could be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal actions from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT NoGov license. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, in this country, and in a bunch of the Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about FiendPhone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com, F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com, Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone, I never knew remote audio could be this good.